Welcome to Hip Hop Now Podcast. If you're from the future, you know what to do. Get your ass out of here. Don't disrespect the legend. Hip Hop is here to stay. Let's get right into the business. What's up, y'all? I am your host, Vegas, and this is Hip Hop Now Podcast, a podcast specifically designed to keep you caught up on all things hip hop, music, and culture. That happened throughout the week. Big shout out to the supporters over at patreon.com slash hip hop now. Link is in the description of this episode. Whether you're listening on Apple Podcasts, Pocket Cast, Overcast, Spotify Podcasts, and many, many more. But now watching on YouTube. And if you don't know, we have since reached. 500 subscribers but now we on to bigger and better it is the road to 1000 subscribers right here on youtube so if you've been listening to the podcast for years and you bounce around and watch a couple of videos here and there on youtube well why don't you just join me on the youtube channel i promise you it's funnier when you see me say it (laughs) Uh, but I appreciate the support anyway. Welcome to the new followers to the channel. I've been posting a couple of shorts and shorts I've done on Instagram forever, right? Done some on TikTok forever, but for this channel and also to get people to see a lot of the other content I produce on this channel, you know, doing shorts is cool because, you know, I find something on the internet, share it with the hip hop audience, some funny stuff. Some crazy stuff, some stuff that make you say, oh, word, that's that's true. That's that's what it is. So definitely subscribe to the podcast. We're trying to get to a thousand people joining us. And again, I look at the stats every week. More than 50 percent of you who watch these videos are not subscribed. So do your brother a solid right now. Subscribe to the podcast. I think we're at 560 now, which is crazy. We just hit five. Not that long ago. So let's keep that momentum going. Uh, Definitely share it with people in the hip hop internet world that you know would also enjoy this kind of content. Really quick updates on the channel. Uh, If you haven't checked them out, check out my series, Tale of the Tapes. You can, if you're watching on video, you can see the cassettes behind me. I have some over there. Also got some bootleg CDs too. If you're trying to, you know, from back in the day, you know. Uh, But, um, it's really a series about those cassettes, when I purchased them, you know, where I was, what I think about the albums. And back then, like put it this way, you know, let's let's just do a little sidecar real quick with this. You know what I'm saying? As a music fan, as a hip hop head, if you know, you know. But back in the day, compared to today, I still browse in the same ways, right? I used to go to the record store and just being there, even if I knew I was buying one album, just being there and seeing what's out, reading, like talking to the DJ, all kinds of stuff. And I did the same thing, uh, if you fast forward now, with streaming, right? Every Friday, I go to like Apple Music or, or Spotify and just look in different genres and see different genres that I'm interested in, um, but see what's new, you know what I'm saying? And, and just now i have the opportunity to listen to the entire projects if i wanted to but those cassettes was more so like make a decision you got ten dollars you got twenty dollars what are you going to do what are you going to buy and the majority of the time i was not leaving with that money in my pocket so a lot of those cassettes some were hit or miss and the thing about back in the days i couldn't just delete it from my list of albums, from my library on my phone. Back then, you just had to eat it. Like, yeah, I bought it. It wasn't that great, but here it is in my collection. So it's dope to go back and see some of those. And there's some things I picked up after the fact, knowing they weren't good, like a recent episode I did with Mob Deep's original, a Mob Deep's real debut album. You know what I'm saying? Juvenile Hell. So check that out on the channel. 
Big shout out to hiphopdx.com, allhiphop.com, double XL mag, and a couple of places where I'm getting some of these stories from. Let's get right to business stuff. So recently, as in right now, uh, <laughs> Shay Noir dropped her new, her latest project, her new album for 2024 entitled The Lotus Child. Um, I, I got to keep it a buck. I was absolutely anticipating this album mainly because if i could find it real quick uh because i want to get the name right and i don't think i i can find it real quick shay noir dropped the ep this year called the chocolate the color chocolate see i messed it up anyway the color chocolate <laughs> volume one very dope ep uh ransom was on there your old your old drew evidence uh for a long time it was sitting in my best of the year and in a lot of ways it still is but to keep it a buck with y'all i think the album is going to replace it and i'll tell you why uh but the album lotus child is only about eight songs and it's about in a half an hour like 28 minutes notable rap features are rhapsody on a song called black girl which is really dope super dope uh and another song um Features uh, 38 special. Uh, Shay Noir is on the production. That's one thing some people don't like to talk about, but Shay Noir is not just a rapper, not just a female rapper, but she also produces a lot of her music. Um, and I believe Status Selected uh, uh, did some production on this album. Now, for those who are new here, when it comes to quote unquote reviewing an album, I like to give it three listens. The first listen is impressions only. The second listen is more so about listen intently. What is this album? What do they have to say? You know, the concept, just embracing everything that's being presented, the beats, the sequencing, all of that. And the third listen is literally just to confirm what my thoughts on it. And my thoughts on this album is that it is a great album. You know, it's one of the best of 2024. And when I say that, I'm not saying that when you look at some albums that people consider the best this year, that it's better than. Obviously, this is my opinion. I And, you know, if certain albums don't make my list, it's because I feel like these albums are better than. But what I mean is, I don't think you can just take an album like this and put it up against every other album that dropped this year and say, is it better? Because it's not just about beats and rhymes. It's about what she has to say. It's about the conviction in her voice when she says it. It's about the variety of the beats. It's about the overall theme. It's about all the contributions from the people featured who are singing, the poets, people are talking, skits, whatever. It's, it's all of it. You know what I'm saying? And it's how it all comes together. And if you are pressing play and by the end of it, you want to run it back, or even if you don't run it back right away, you say to yourself, that was a good use of my time. That was really good. I got to know Shay Noir a little bit better. Uh, you know, I got to know her skills a little bit better. I feel like she's better, whatever, whatever it may be. You know when you're satisfied after the first listen that you're working with something good. And as I ran it back, it felt like it felt like when you sit on a couch that you might buy in the uh, furnished furniture store, right? You know, you don't know it, it looks soft, but you don't know what it's going to be when you sit down and you you start to sink into it, you know what I'm saying? And you start to feel comfortable and say, I could see myself sitting in this chair watching sports you know what i'm saying at home i know i'm going a long way to say a bunch about this but i just wanted to express why i think this album is that good now the ep was really good to me but you know what an ep is like four songs and she did a lot of the same things a lot of the same thematic things um there and she told some some dope stories in that ep and it's tough for me to say that a four song ep is better than an eight song ep 
when the eight song EP is good. Now, if you never heard Shay no uh, of Shay Noir, she got a bunch of material. I wasn't a fan out the gate because I felt like the production and her rhyming were just kind of par for the course, right? Like it's she could be a male or female. This type of rapping, this type of subject matter, for the most part, these types of beats are what I'm just used to hearing. And at some point, you just go to who you know, right? I can't do, oh, here's a new one. Here's another new one. Here's another new person. Here's another, I can't keep doing the new people. You know what I'm saying? Especially when they're not that much different from the others as far as what they offer. And that's male or female. But there's something special about Shay Noir and her care for her music. And knowing that, she can take the reins as the MC as well as the producer. It makes the music for me, especially when it's good, a little bit more impactful. That's why I like Big Crit. You know what I'm saying? Because with Big Crit, the first time I heard him, I loved this project. And to know that he wrote everything and he made all of the beats when I first heard him, it was like, this is a person who is not outside doing no nonsense like when they were making this they were you got to be that focused because you're making all of it you're making the beats and you're writing so that's kind of how i feel about lotus child now will it crack my top five of the year that's tough because my top five of the year as it stands right now which i ain't going to say until we get to the end of the year right um it's pretty solid it's the 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 five albums I have right now in my top five. When I say I listen to them religiously when they came out, and when I go back, it's not for one listen. I go right, I fall right back in that bag into running it back. Those are my top five. Like they really got to be my top five favorite. Will this be in my best of the year? I think it will. I have no reason not to include it. Um, and I think just out of respect for other artists and the slots that I a lot for, um, you know, best of the year, I'm, I'm not going to, somebody would have to put out two classics for me to put them in this list twice. So I kind of feel like if I'm going to choose between her EP and the album, I'm going to choose the album but I love the EP. So there you have it. Did you hear Shay Noir's new album, The Lotus Child? Have you ever even heard of her? Do you have a streaming service? You should check it out, but leave your comments in the comment section below. Obviously I will read your comments and I will respond. You know, sometimes it's an emoji. Sometimes it's like word or facts. Sometimes it's just like, what are you even talking about? Who knows? It depends on what you type. So uh, RZA said recently, and I'm I'm going to go to a shout out to hiphopdx.com where I'm getting this story from. RZA argues it was inevitable that New York hip hop would lose originality. Now, this was in an interview with um, Complex. And he says, I quote, from my seat, since I've been here almost from the beginning, the thing that New York may have stepped away from is its own originality. But it's almost natural that's going to happen because before we didn't hear nothing else. There was no other renditions. It's like when you go back and as a scientist and you study Dr. Dre and you listen to him taking his early production from NWA, you still hear that the breakbeats of New York is still the foundation. But eventually, as he's getting better and better, he's incorporating instrumentation. Those instrumentations then come back to us. And then when you start listening to Biggie with Diddy's production, you're hearing instrumentation and people are playing the notes over. So we continue to inspire each other so when so then when the South becomes the dominant force of hip hop and you're growing up and then someone like ASAP Rocky is able to hear that and love hip hop 
love the cadence of New York, love the swag of New York, but he's been listening to that musical creation. Then he blends that into his creation. And I'll just go over, because I don't want to read that whole damn article, but I, I, I damn near read all the quotes. <laughs> and then eventually, like Joey Badass, he takes it back to what New York was, bringing it into it. But yet still, he's melodic in his hooks. So in his amalgam amalgamation of everything now in New York is in that. Now will New York step out of that and bring something really, uh, something totally new to the table? I don't know. So RZA said a lot there about New York, about New York hip hop. Uh, I am from New York. If you haven't guessed by watching the video, go Yankees. Uh, but I don't, I, I agree with RZA, right? I agree with RZA from the standpoint of because hip hop has become popular in so many different regions and so many different regions of specifically the United States have kind of led the way for however long, whether it's the South, West Coast, New York, um, a state for a second or two or whatever, um, people will be influenced by it if you like it. Um, and New York is no different, right? Especially now we have with the with the internet and social media, we have so much access to everything around the world, just like people who have access to be from another country and watch me do this podcast or listen to this podcast. Now you're you're being influenced by more than than what's just around you. You know what I'm saying? There's plenty of people I know from the South to different areas of the country who said, yo, I'm a hip hop head, but growing up, I felt like I was the only one. None of my friends listened to hip hop like that. I couldn't turn the radio on. I, I barely had access. Like, you know, I, I would get the Source magazine when I could get it. I would get the music however I could get it. But literally, you know, it wasn't a thing where it was all around me. And the same goes for regions being exposed to each other. Now, we, everything is everything. Like, where you're from may not even matter at this point. And obviously, you can point to hip-hop artists from the West Coast who are heavily, heavy, heavily influenced. Did I even say that right? I don't know. Uh, by East Coast styles of hip-hop right bars technique there's plenty of west coast cats that spit just like that jay electronica being from new orleans if he didn't say it his whole style is what would be considered a new york style right and vice versa so it was only a matter of time or inevitable like rizza said that you would see people out of new york who are influenced by those outside of New York because it used to happen the other way all the time. And that's only right because I know for me as a fan, I never went to the record store in Brooklyn, New York in the 90s and said, oh, you know, give me whatever's from New York. There wasn't a like, oh, New York artist section. It was all together. West Coast was there. You know what I'm saying? Some South Cats was there. The, but I like to go to the record stores that was like, yo, we got everything. You know what I'm saying? Because when I'm looking at the source or other magazines and I'm learning about artists from other places, you know, if if they're raving about a particular album, it doesn't matter where they're from. I, I want to get that album. So I feel like it's par for the course now. There are those people who who don't even want to hear none of that, right? Like South is South, New York is New York, West Coast is West Coast, but it's never been that. West Coast has always showed mad love. Like all you gotta do is watch an interview of somebody like MC8 saying how much he loved, and he says we. You don't even just say him. He loved EPMD. I loved EPMD, and what does the West Coast of EPMD have in common? Well, EPMD is notorious for rapping over the funk style beats, sample and funk. I love funk, so I was drawn to 
EPMD and obviously drawn to the West Coast sound, which especially in the 90s was heavy on sample and funk, including Dr. Dre. So Riz is on point with his statements. And there are a lot of people who would rather it continue as a divide, but that divide ended a very long time ago. Um, and honestly, it's for me as a music fan in general, beyond hip hop, it's right up my alley to 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 like certain artists. Like I prefer Joey Badass not sounding like he's from Boot Camp Click in the 90s. I was there for that. And I still listen to Boot Camp Click in the 90s and whatever they do that's new. So I don't need a new artist, even though it's nice sometimes, but I don't need a new artist to mimic that. I like what Joey Badass has become. And I know y'all may look at one record and say, oh, that singing joint? Nah, that's not even his catalog. That's what he's doing right now. I prefer him to experiment in a lot of ways and, and mix and combine a lot of elements because he's always going to be from Brooklyn. He's always going to be a New Yorker. Anytime he needs to flip that switch and get in that bag, he will. It's the same reason why people slept on Kendrick in the battle. They're thinking, oh, he don't, he don't make alien noises and, and say some weird stuff and blah, blah, blah. And then he makes a song like 616 in L.A. where it's just straight bars over Al Green sample. It's like, oh, you forgot who he was? He makes a song like Not Like Us. Oh, you forgot I was from Compton. So... All the barriers and stuff like that as far as what coast and what music and who should listen to what. If if that's how you look at music, then and you like being limited, then cool. Right? Maybe, maybe none of none of the other stuff uh resonates with you, and that's okay. And I'm not even being sarcastic, that's literally okay. But this is the world, and Rizza just put it down. So hey. And lastly, all right, so I'm not even going to hold y'all. I have been slacking when it comes to hip-hop documentaries. There's so many that dropped that I did not watch for one reason or another. Run DMC, Bismarcky. Bismarcky was tough because I, I think I was going to be sad. Um, and on and on and on. Some of them I'm able to catch uh, but or will catch eventually. but. Hey, there is one documentary coming up that I am really interested in to the point I just may watch it because I'm interested in learning the intimate details of not only the incident, but everything. There's a documentary on the way uh, about Shine, formerly of Bad Boy Records, notoriously linked to the shooting in the club that broke up Diddy and J-Lo, but also put Sean in prison and, and ultimately got him deported, right? Now, he's since been free, and he's since been a major figure uh, where he's from, which I believe is Belize. So here are, here are the details regarding this. Sean is getting, this is on Hip Hop DX, so go to their website, check it out. Sean is gearing up to release a documentary about his life, and he's getting candid about the 1999 shooting alongside Diddy that he ultimately went to prison for. In the trailer, the rapper turned politician maintained his innocence and echoed his previous sentiments that he was the fall guy for the incident. Here's a quote from it. Uh, it says, I was absolutely set up uh, to be the fall guy. One of the most difficult parts of it was watching everybody succeed. I spent 10 years in prison, but I was able to move on. This docu uh, documentary uh, entitled The Honorable Sean hits Hulu on November 18th. I am going to watch this because there's something to be said about a comeback story like this, a dude who's not bitter. He's not doing it. He could have did that a long time ago. He's not bitter. He's just about telling the truth of the matter. And we've heard from one of the victims. She straight up said, 
Diddy was the one that shot me. Diddy got off. I didn't do anything. You know what I'm saying? Nas said in one of his records, I don't like the way P. Diddy did shine with different lawyers. Like, there's there's a lot there. And what Sean has to say about watching everybody succeed, I could feel that because just imagine that you didn't do what they said you did, but you did something in defense of a person who you were trying to be loyal to. And you go away and that's like, literally, that's it. You are in jail for 10 years. You're getting deported. Your life could be over. Most people would be done for. But Shine has triumphed. And, and those who don't know Shine's like origin, and I'm going to just give it from a hip hop fan perspective. He had a controversial way to go at it, right? Shine literally, I think, only has two albums, right? He has his bad boy debut and then he has another one that's like um the godfather something whatever and um the first one his debut had a couple of hits on there but the the controversy around sean was did he try to sign somebody who sound like biggie now when you hear sean talk he doesn't sound like biggie but back then especially when he was premiered on a total record the flow the they were going for biggie with the flow big time i remember when i first heard it i was in the club in dc and i think the dj said something like yo y'all like this guy this guy sound like biggie or oh, he was lying like biggie back you know and i remember when the record hit I was standing still in the club. Me and my friends was, you know, we were standing still in the club because we was like, what? And you you hear Shine on this total record and you're kind of like, yo, I mean, that kind of sounds like big. And it was like mixed emotions, right? Because for one, it was like, nah, there's something, something wrong with this. It's like the AI thing, right? Something's wrong with this. But by the time Shine released his project, you know, I, I kind of felt like, uh, you know what, it's it's not the same as Big. He's not even close to Big. He's not as, as skillful as him. He has a voice that's sort of similar, but if you're listening closely enough, it's really not similar to Big at all. And he just wasn't successful as an artist, but he really only had one album on this label. He didn't really get a, a true opportunity at a second album. And, you know, his life was changed forever. So for me, part of what makes me want to watch this is that journey, right? Like hearing from him directly, even though I read articles back in the days and I know da da blah, but hearing from him directly, how he got on, his interactions with Puff around, the, around that time, how he felt about how he was received. I know Little Kim was not feeling him whatsoever. Um, obviously, the incident and where he is today. And I just think it's a com compelling story, even if you're not a big hip hop fan, because it's just the reality. And he's here. He He's lived to tell the story when it could have gone bad in any direction at any point given the situation so what are you gonna do are you gonna watch this documentary do you even care about shine did you like his album back in the days i think it's grown on me over time back then i was like why did i buy this but now you know every now and again i'll hit play and i'm like okay it wasn't it wasn't that bad it was cool um i really like the commission record though more than anything uh, leave your comments in the comment section below. We trying to get to 1,000 subscribers. So if you just watched this episode and you like it, hit subscribe, hit like, share with people you know, enjoy this kind of content. Uh, and if you listen on the audio side, subscribe and review on Apple Podcasts. I'm, you know, I got a couple of reviews up there, but I don't know when the last review happened. So please. We're trying to keep it moving. We're trying to grow and all of that. And, 
you know, I never used to do video, but now I do video. Obviously, I'm in my garage right now on the visual, but I have ideas for a true, a true set with 4K cameras and lights and, you know, some, some of the dope stuff like the music will follow me in this setting, but I have some other ideas also that I want to see through. So if you would like to help with that, patreon.com slash hip hop now is a great way to contribute to the podcast till next time y'all i'm not a critic i'm a fan go yankees